Hey, this is Iftar from Skinnerbox. Upon a popular request, we decided to do a short tutorial about how to use Room EQ Wizard in conjunction with Ableton Live, how to measure your room, how to apply correcting filters, export them as an impulse response, and import them into Live and use them as room correction for your system. So obviously the first thing we need to do is to download Room EQ Wizard, which is free, by the way. Um, I'll post a link down below. And the second thing we would need is a measurement microphone. We currently use XREF20 by Sonarworks, uh, which is pretty nice. It's pretty cheap and it comes with its own calibration file, which is recommended. There are other alternatives uh, which are even cheaper. The only thing which is worth checking is that the mic in question has a calibration file. So first we're going to configure the inputs and outputs of Room EQ Wizard. You need to assign your input and output devices. And under the mic slash meter tab, you can import a calibration file for your microphone. If you want, you can calibrate your sound card to add even another layer of accuracy. Uh, we did it with and without and we couldn't see a huge difference, so we just skip it this time. So the next step would be to position the microphone. The mic we're using should be positioned facing the speakers, but bear in mind that different mics should be positioned differently. It's usually documented, some should be positioned facing the ceiling, some should be positioned facing the floor, so just check it. In any case, the mic should be positioned in your listening position at ear height, centered between the speakers. If you don't have a mic stand, you can also hold the mic in your hand, but you should do it with arm distance so your body won't create immediate reflections and mess up the response reading. So now that we have it all set up, we can click the measure icon and start to measure. The measurement works like this, that the Room EQ Wizard plays a frequency sweep and listens to the amplitude changes and maps it as a response. I have my start frequency set at uh, 30 Hz and my end frequency at 20 kHz, but you can adjust it according to your speaker. A word of warning, the measurement process can and should be loud, so you better put some earplugs, and also make sure that it's not too loud, so you won't destroy your speakers. So now I click Start Measuring. And this is the response of uh, our studio. We're in a completely untreated studio, and as you can see, we have a pretty huge peak at 47 Hz, another pretty big peak around 150 Hz, a dip around 120 Hz, and null points and combing further up the spectrum. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a couple of more measurements, moving the mic around my listening position, because obviously I don't just sit still when I produce or mix. So it's uh, nice if I'm able to cover the whole listening area. And when I'm done taking measurements, I'm going to click the Average Responses button in order to create an average of all the measurements that I've taken. So next up, I'm going to go to the EQ section and I'm going to have Room EQ Wizard generate a compensating EQ. Now we have some couple of things we need to set up. First, we need to choose the equalizer type, which should be set to generic. Under the target settings, we should set the speaker type to full range if you're using studio speakers without a sub, like us. Next, we should set the target level, meaning around which point Room EQ Wizard should amplify or decrease peaks and holes. Next, you should set up the frequency range that you want to correct. We recommend to stick to the low end because you don't want to overcorrect your system. Um, it could lead to some issues and we keep the flatness target at uh, 3 dB. When we apply a room EQ correction, we generally prefer to take away frequencies rather than amplify. It is possible to amplify, but we make sure that we don't use more than 9 dB of gain, especially in the bus range, because what eventually happens is that it comes on the expenses of the headroom of your speaker. Also bear in mind that some issues cannot be fixed with room EQ, like uh, speaker boundary interference reflections or desk reflections, and these should be treated acoustically. So now if we click match response to target, Room EQ Wizard will calculate the compensating filters on the selected range. Next, we're going to export the impulse response of these filters. On the export dialog, we're going to keep it mono, 32-bit, and it's a good idea to export it in all the sample rates you use to work with, because the impulse response has to match the sample rate of the project that you're working with in Ableton Live. 
After we did that, we're going to launch Ableton and we're going to load the convolution reverb, the standard version, not the pro version. There's no need for that. As you can see, my project settings are 96 kilohertz. So I'm going to load the corresponding impulse response into the convolution reverb. Then I'm going to turn off the EQ and dial in the dry wet to 100%. All the other parameters should not be touched. In case your generated filters are also including excessively amplified frequencies, it's also a good idea to take down the master level of live just to avoid digital clipping. And this is practically it. You can save a preset of the device to have it in the future. I'm going to run another measurement running the output of Room EQ Wizard through live and check that the correction is working. And as you can see, the peaks are gone. You can see the earlier measurement pre-EQ. And it's also matching the predicted curve. So this is it. Now you can use your Room EQ correction. This should always be the last device on the chain, post everything. Also, don't forget to turn it off before you export your tracks, because otherwise you're going to mix the alinearities and room response of your room in your mix, which is not a good thing.